Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Genocide of Hazaras continues unabated in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Punjab police busts ISI-backed narco-terrorism module. And India designates 10 members of various outfits as terrorists. Since the Taliban seized control of Afghanistan in August 2021, the risk of mass atrocities has increased for vulnerable groups, including ethnic and religious minorities. The Hazara community is experiencing increasing and widespread attacks alongside a history of persecution, necessitating an immediate response by the international community. A report. These disturbing images of upturned tables and benches and the damaged classrooms give some insight into the endless pain and suffering that the Hazara community in Afghanistan experiences. The Hazara students of Kaj Tuition Center, a private educational institute in Kabul, were taking mock exams in crowded classrooms when a bomb ripped through the building, killing dozens of students, a majority of whom were female. According to reports, the assailant shot at guards outside the educational facility before entering the classroom where he detonated the bomb. This was the second assault on a school this year in the dasht e barchi neighborhood of the Afghan capital, which is home to a large Hazara population. The horrible tragedy is the most recent in a string of attacks in regions where the minority Shiite community calls home, another example of the Taliban's failure to protect minorities. <laughs> The explosion triggered outrage and leaders and activists from around the world have decried the incident. The United Nations Security Council members have emphasized the importance of apprehending and prosecuting those responsible for these terrorist acts in Afghanistan. India has also condemned the continued targeting of students at educational institutes in Afghanistan. The violent persecution of the Afghan Shia community goes back more than a century, but has reached unprecedented levels in the last one year under the Taliban. The targeting of Hazara houses of worship, schools, and other public places has intensified since the Taliban took control last year. In the last one year, the Islamic State of Khorasan has claimed responsibility for 13 attacks against Hazaras. Approximately 700 people have been killed or injured in these attacks. Last month, the Hazara Inquiry, an inquiry into the situation of the Hazara community in Afghanistan and Pakistan, run by British parliamentarians and experts, published its reports on the dire situation of the Hazara community in Afghanistan. The reports revealed that the religious and ethnic minority are at serious risk of genocide at the hands of the Islamic State Khorasan and the Taliban. Many Hazara Shias migrated to Pakistan in earlier decades, hoping to find a safe haven there, only to be targeted ruthlessly by the Lashkari Jangvi terrorist group. Anti-Shia outfits in Pakistan, like Lashkari Jangvi and Sipahi Sahaba, have been continuously targeting Shias in Pakistan. According to a report by the International Forum for Rights and Security, Pakistan has witnessed the killing of approximately 4,847 Shias in incidents of sectarian violence between 2001 and 2018. Shias have nowhere to go as they are threatened on both sides of the border. The only porous border that remains is the border with Pakistan. Given the fact that anti-Shia hatred has originated in Pakistan, it, is, it was very unlikely that Pakistan would be a safe haven for the uh, Hazaras. The Hazaras are one of many ethnic groups in Afghanistan and are also one of the larger minority groups in neighboring Pakistan. The Hazaras' ideologies mostly align with the Shiite Muslim community and are frequently targeted by the Taliban, who follow a stricter version of Sunni beliefs of Islam. With the re-establishment of the Islamic Emirate in Afghanistan, the future looks bleak for the persecuted communities in the country.
The security forces in Jammu and Kashmir are on high alert and they are working tirelessly to dismantle the region's terrorist network. In the most recent operation, Indian security forces killed four terrorists in two separate encounters in the Shopian district. Three of the four terrorists were linked to the banned terror group jaish e mohammed while the fourth was linked to the lashkar e taiba There is a report. The neighboring country of Pakistan and its proxies have made repeated attempts to disturb the peace in the Jammu and Kashmir region. Terrorists are being given funds and training so they may sneak into Jammu and Kashmir and assault security personnel and civilians. However, observant Indian security forces consistently thwart infiltration attempts and eliminate terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir, putting a stop to Islamabad's nefarious efforts. Recently, Indian security forces neutralized four terrorists in two separate encounters at Dharaj and Mulu areas encounters in Shopian district of South Kashmir. Three of the four terrorists were linked with the terror outfit jaish e mohammed and the fourth was the associated with the lashkar e taiba An information concerning the presence of terrorists in the region was sent to a joint team of police and security services. After which security forces launched a cordon and a search operation in the area. Police also recovered four AK series rifles, a pistol, eight AK magazines, and other incriminating materials from both the encounter sites. The back-to-back -back encounters in Shopia yet again show the efficacy and the efficiency with which the Indian security forces have been successful in combating and containing terrorism ever since. Article 370 was abrogated in Jammu and Kashmir. The Indian security forces have been able to bring down the terrorist activities of the militants to a great extent. As India continues to fight terrorism along its borders, 118 terrorists have been killed in the Kashmir Valley this year. This report was revealed by Jammu and Kashmir police, who also revealed that 32 foreign terrorists were killed out of 118. In the same time period last year, 55 terrorists were killed. With a crackdown on separatists and the center's move to restore Kashmiri Pandit's land, terrorists are under pressure to make their presence felt through fear. This is why terrorists backed by Pakistan are escalating terror-related violence in Kashmir. This has occurred in the last three to four weeks and coincides with the situation in Pakistan. Their economy is in doldrums, inflation is at its peak, the army is being openly questioned. These instances have never happened in Pakistan. So a diversion is created by engineering attacks in Kashmir. As Pakistan finds itself in an economic crisis and stays at imminent bankruptcy, it is once again trying to encourage and engineer terrorist attacks in the Kashmir Valley so as to wean away the attention of its citizens from the issues that they are facing. However, Pakistan will not be successful as the Indian government and the Indian security forces are at an high alert and like before, they've always given a befitting reply to anyone who has dared stare at India. The underlying factors of Pakistan's Kashmir policy have remained unchanged since the first Kashmir war. Its diplomatic efforts both bilaterally as well as raising the issue at various international fora have been limited to malign India and to portray that bilateral approach have failed. Islamabad must end material support for terrorism in Kashmir if regional peace is to be assured.
Pakistan's military establishment and intelligence agencies consider terror sponsorship an important mechanism for maintaining country's sovereignty and national identity. Over the course of the past several, Islamabad has built a complex network of relationships with numerous jihadist terror groups. Pakistan sends these terrorists in India to create turmoil and disturb peace. Recently, India has designated 10 members of Hezbul Mujahideen, lashkar e taiba and other proscribed outfits as terrorists under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Pakistan has long been a difficult and disruptive neighbour to India. Over the course of the past several decades, Pakistan has built a complex network of relationships with numerous jihadi terror groups. Recently, India has designated 10 members of Hezbollah Mujahideen, lashkar e taiba and other proscribed outfits as terrorists under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. The Union Ministry of Home Affairs issued various notifications under which the persons operating for different terror outfits in Jammu and Kashmir were notified as terrorists under the UAPA. The notifications revealed that Shaukat Ahmed Sheikh alias Shaukat Mochi, who is operating as Chief Launching Commander of Hezbollah Mujahideen, has been declared a terrorist. As per MHA, Shaukat is involved in coordinating infiltration and requirement of terrorists and execution of attacks owing to his deep network of associates in North Kashmir. You see, there are hundreds of terrorist groups in Pakistan, some of whom are very well known and have been indulging in uh, umpteen number of attacks against India especially lashkar e taiba jaish e mohammed jamaat ud dawa uh, j- there are so many of them and what they do is whenever they come under pressure whether from the fatf or from other international organizations with the connivance of pakistani intelligence agencies the military and the deep state so to say or sometimes with the connivance of the uh, the government itself uh, they are able to mutate themselves. They rename into a new group and then they start recruiting people. They start arranging funding. They indulge in terror activities. Pakistan does in fact support three prominent jihadi terror groups in Jammu and Kashmir. The Hezbollah Mujahideen, lashkar e taiba and jaish e Mohammed, even though these groups are officially banned by the Pakistani government. The United States and the international community have also accused Pakistan of sponsoring terrorist groups in India, a charge Pakistan vehemently denies. The US has urged its citizens to reconsider travel to Pakistan, especially its restive provinces, due to terrorism and sectarian violence. In a travel advisory, the US State Department urged its citizens not to travel to Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa provinces, including the formerly federally administered tribal areas, due to terrorism and kidnapping. Unfortunately, such advisories are unlikely to be effective in changing Islamabad's behavior. Parks, military establishment and intelligence agencies consider terror sponsorship an important mechanism for maintaining Pakistan's sovereignty and national identity. However, when questioned about the policy of terror sponsorship, Pakistani officials deny it and demand evidence. Pakistan complains also that it is, uh, it is being affected or afflicted by terrorist groups. They should not forget the Basma Suri story. This is the least I would tell them. Well, the terrorist groups actually find their recruits from the poor people, the disadvantaged, those who have no hope left. They are the ones who are unemployed youth. And then in the name of religion, they exploit it, they recruit them. So this is also one of the major problems that only the states can resolve in concert with the religious leaders. But Pakistan 
will not do so. Harboring and nurturing terror groups can never ever settle dispute. The sooner Pakistan understands this, the better. India will never commence dialogues under constant security threat from terror attacks. Moreover, Pakistan cannot bleed India to the level it desires, nor would there ever be a uprising in India like it happened in erstwhile East Pakistan, now Bangladesh. On the contrary, the only country which has and would continue to suffer is Pakistan itself. Several investigation agencies around the world have repeatedly confirmed Pakistan's dominance in the international narcotics trade and funding of terrorist activities. There are clear indications that narco-terrorist networks based in Pakistan have increased their activities along the Indo-Pakistan border. Recently, Punjab police busted an ISI-backed narco-terrorism module by apprehending its main operative and recovering arms and ammunition from his possession. A report. As an organized cross-border crime, narcotics trafficking has evolved into a phenomenon that poses a global concern due to its sinister connections to terrorist organizations. Narco-terrorism has been a threat to India for a number of years. To keep the terror machine running, Pakistan has been using narcotics as a major financing tool in Kashmir. While it has been pushing trained terrorists into Kashmir and also deadly arms and ammunition, besides fake currency, narcotics are being pumped into the valley to reach Indian markets like Punjab, Delhi, Mumbai to generate money for terror operations and recruitment. Pakistan-based narco-terrorist networks have stepped up their activities on the Indo-Pakistan international border and are making incessant attempts to push drugs into India. Recently, Punjab police busted an ISI-backed narco-terrorism module by arresting its main operative and recovering arms and explosives from his possession. The arrested accused has been identified as Yograj Singh Elias Yog, a resident of Rajoki village in Tarantaran district. The Punjab police have also identified five more accomplices who are part of the module in carrying out illegal activities across Punjab and adjoining states. The police have also recovered a one RDX loaded Tiffin box fabricated into an improvised explosive device, two sophisticated AK-56 assault rifles along with two magazines. Pakistan knows that it cannot fight a conventional war with India and therefore it continues to raise an asymmetric war in which narcotics has a major role to play because narcotic money is not in formal economy and therefore cannot be caught by FATF. The link between drug traffickers, criminal networks and terrorists poses a significant threat. Terrorists utilizing trafficking routes with the assistance of well-established criminal networks to infiltrate with arms and explosives have added a critical dimension to border security. Furthermore, widespread availability of narcotics and drugs encourages domestic population demand for narcotics and drugs, consumption of which leads to dysfunctional behavior causing a law and order problem in society. That the narco money is being used to fund the terrorists as well as to generate money through irregular means and therefore with Haqqani in the government in Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan finds that this is a lucrative trade and therefore the drug cartels are trying every possible means to send the narcotics into India and create a market and also spoil the new generation. 
narco terrorism is a key component of Pakistan state sponsored cross border terrorism which is used to fund and conduct asymmetric warfare against its neighbors According to the NCB report more than 25% of the money spent by Pakistan spy agency the ISI on terrorist activities in India comes from the narcotics drug trade the ISI's use of narcotics for terror funding is seen as a ruse to avoid being tracked down. But much to its chagrin and humiliation, Islamabad's narco terror network has now been exposed as Indian security forces have increased their offensive against Pakistan sponsored terrorism on all fronts. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Uzma Jafri signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.